God, we love you so much. And God, we lift up these songs, Lord God, to praise, to glorify your great name, because you alone are worthy to be praised. Receive our praises, Lord. Receive our worship, Lord God, as we offer them to you, Lord God, from our hearts and through our lips, with all of our love and gratitude to you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That the evidence of God's love, of God's goodness, of God's faithfulness is all around your life. That you can, that you can just, you just know that the evidence of God's goodness is all around you. You know, and that, that is our testimony. And it's a testimony that we are encouraged to share with other people who do not know Jesus. But this time I want us to sing this song. The song is called Evidence. The evidence of God's goodness all over my life.
Amen. Please be seated at this time. Let's start with a few announcements here. Uh, Blaine and Mercedes uh, talking about the youth here. On uh, March 10th and 11th, uh, I'd like the youth to go to Alameda, which is up north in the Bay Area for the uh, Lyft um, Conference. So I would like anybody, any parent in the, that have the youth, the, we need to meet and I need to give you some info and talk about it. There's some things the youth know about, there's some things they don't, and, um, but we, uh, I'd like to tell you what we're gonna do outside of church. Um, we're gonna try to make our money this year outside the church, not in the church. So uh, it's gonna take a little bit of effort on, uh, well, on their part, but definitely they're gonna need some drive from you, I would imagine, so I know we are. So I'd like to just meet either in the Friendship Hall. I know the Spanish is having uh, their Bible study, so I don't wanna interfere with them. If so, we can maybe meet in the Fellowship Hall, is that? So after church, it's only gonna be like five, 10 minutes, not gonna be long at all. I'm hungry, I know you are too, so, um, you know, not, not too much. Is that it? Okay, thank you. Yes, and um, first I'd like to give everyone a welcome. You know, I should have done that in the first place, but anyway, welcome to everyone here uh, this morning, and those that are following us online, we welcome them also. God is good, this church is alive, and uh, God is doing great things, and let's go, let's rally behind our youth. You know, if you want to sponsor a youth, 50 bucks uh, for this trip, you know, say, I want to sponsor one youth, you might want to sponsor two. That's $100. But let's get them to that conference. I remember going myself as a youth, you know, three, 4,000 young people. Um, it's wonderful, you know, having that many young people at these conferences. And so let's make it happen for them in March. And uh, let's, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, okay? Father, we thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here this morning. We thank you, Lord, because, Lord, there's evidence all around us, Lord, of your goodness in our lives. And we thank you for that song, and we thank you, Lord, for the reality of that in our lives. Now bless the rest of the service. May everything that is said and done be glorifying to you. For we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Please stand.
at this time. And Lord, uh, now I want to present before you, Lord, our children, our youth. Father, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to bless their lives. Father, they may continue learning and growing and developing in the knowledge of you, Father. And I pray that you would bless the teachers. And Lord, especially bless uh, uh, all our youth and our children in our church, Father. Once again, Father, bless this uh, message that uh, I'm going to be sharing from your word. Lord, may it reach our hearts, and most importantly, may we apply it to our lives, for we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. And uh, let's, uh, I did want us to see a video. Uh, Brother Omar, okay, we're going to see a video here, Missions. My name is Nick. I'm your IMB missionary in Eastern Europe, helping with Ukrainian refugees. I just want to thank you for your giving. Uh, that's helped to make it possible for me and others getting food and health care out to them. That has helped us get to a lot of conversations with Ukrainians about the gospel and about eternal things in their unique crisis. Thank you for giving to the cooperative program, to Sin Relief Projects, and to Lottie Moon. Amen. And uh, this Sunday and next Sunday will be the last Sundays that we'll be collecting right in front there in your pew. There should be a, an envelope uh, that looks like this in an envelope, and if you want to put your offering in here, International Mission Board, Reaching the Nations uh, together. And so praise the Lord that we're able to support 1,600 1, to 1,700 uh, missionaries throughout the world, Asia, Africa, you name it, uh, Ukraine, we, where there are people there that are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And with an offering like this, Lottie Moon offering, uh, we are able to support uh, missionaries in other parts of the world. And this morning, I want to continue with the uh, uh, sermon series that is Get Wisdom. The Lord says that he will give it freely, freely and abundantly. And all you're getting, get wisdom. The Bible says that. And so uh, that is there for us to take and also to apply to our lives. So get wisdom, wise living. For foolish times. We're living in times where uh, bad is good, good is bad. Everything is upside down. Uh, we're living in dark times. We're living in terrible times. We're living in wild and, and wicked times. But uh, we need to learn how to live wisely. How to live wisely. And so that's what these messages from uh, Proverbs is about. And this morning I want to share with you about the essential uh, advice, essential advice for life, essential advice uh, for life, if you have your outline there. And I simply put here what? Some advice, some advice for us to follow that comes uh, from the pages of Proverbs, written by the wisest man who ever lived, who became the most foolish man that ever lived. How did he go from the wisest to the foolish? Well, that can happen if we get off track and we don't follow God's wisdom. We follow man's wisdom. You're going to be in trouble and you will go from being wise in, in following God's word to being foolish, being foolish. And you know what? Uh, one of our president's uh, sons, Reagan's sons, uh, former president, uh, he comes on television. I was just watching him the other day. And, um, you know, um, I just shook my head like this when I heard him say, um, you know what, I, I belong to the atheist, you know, atheist group here in the United States, and we want, 
you know, to encourage you to uh, follow us or to, to join us. You know, atheist is a person who doesn't believe there's a God. And uh, he said that. And towards the end of what he shared on that uh, TV commercial, he said, and, um, you know, I'm, the, I'm one that's ready for hell, you know. I'm one that's ready for hell, ready to accept it and receive it. And I said, you're not going to be when you're there. You're not, <laughs> you're not going to be ready. You'll see. But uh, the Bible says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And that man is a fool. Anyway, so don't be foolish. Include God in your life and follow his word. Follow his word. So let's look at the, his advice here in chapter 1, verses 9, excuse me, verses 8 through 19. Uh, we're going to be looking at these verses, okay, right there in, in our Bibles. Take them out, <clears throat> and let's follow along because, uh, you know, you, you don't want to hear uh, my opinion. You want to know uh, straight from the Lord, what does the Lord have to say? And so we begin here uh, in verse 8 and 9, and uh, this, is, this is what the Word of God uh, says here. Okay, you got your Bibles. It says, Hear, my son, your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Indeed, they are graceful, wreath to your heart, and ornaments about your neck. There's, there's something wonderful, something w wonderful for you to, to have in your mind, in your heart. And uh, I want to start with this, that when I was a kid, uh, I was hanging around uh, someone, I won't say his name because uh, he had the same name as someone uh, around here, but uh, anyway, his, uh, yeah, over here, <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, and my family, extended family, my uncles, aunts, cousins, you know, and around the city up here north uh, in the Bay Area, uh, in that city would, would tell me, Oscar, or they would call me by a, a certain nickname, uh, which I've never shared with any church in 46 years, okay? Uh, but if you ever saw Happy Days, it was Kachi, Kachi, okay? Don't, don't start calling me that, okay? <laughs> but uh, all my family name mem uh, members would know me by that uh, particular name. And they would tell me, you know, don't hang around that, that, that kid. Don't hang around that kid. You know, and... Okay, I didn't know any better, you know what, I just uh, got to know him, and I thought he was cool and everything, you know, and, and uh, what have you, but yes, uh, you know, he did smoke, he did drink, he did sniff glue, because I was next to him when he was sniffing, you know, the paper, the glue, uh, I better not say that, you know, there, but uh, in the bag, and next to him in the bushes, but thank the Lord I never did it. You know, how I came that close, and I never uh, did uh, these vices, these uh, habits, these, uh, you know, drugs and everything is beyond me. But the Lord, you know, was watching over me, had his hand on me. But this was the advice of, of all those uncles and aunts. And, hey, you know, don't hang around that kid. Don't hang. Because they knew the reputation he had. I want to ask you this morning, how many of you uh, went, uh, in your life hung around or or knew someone that was a bad influence, bad influence because of the things they were doing in their life. Any of you here hung around someone like that? I see that. Don't look at your husband or your wife. Okay, <laughs> that's, no, no, I better not say that. I'm going to start. Anyway, so uh, this, is, this is what happened with me. And I thank the Lord that even though I made it through that period of my life, but I could have, what, been easily, uh, you know, uh, Influence that could have been, you know. So the advice is, you know, be careful uh, of the bad influences in your life, young people. Are you listening to me? You know, they're right here in the front, some of them, you know, and uh, you know, no, no, no. But she's so beautiful, Pastor. She's so beautiful, and and I know I could make her become a Christian if I only marry her. See, if I marry her, she'll be a Christian. She'll be coming here to Andela. No, no, the Lord says, look for another Christian. That's what we're supposed to do, but often we don't do that, right? Because she's so beautiful, or he's so handsome, and boom, we're, we're there. That's one of the... But uh, this, you know, we begin here with verses 8 and 9, which we read right there. 
And the first advice here in these, this advice that we receive here is pay attention to parental what? Guidance. Guidance. Now, if your parents are going to tell you, get out there and drink, get out there and, and get, you know, <laughs> wasted or whatever, you know, then, then there, you know, this. And I have heard parents look at me in the face and they're not, they're not Christian. They tell me, I'd rather my son be out there in the street drunk, you know, like, and, and in drugs than be in your church and, and in him following Jesus. I go, okay, you know, I'm, I'm not... I hope not. I hope, I hope they, you know, they, you know, but I've heard parents say that. But here we're talking about <clears throat> parents who really want the very best uh, for their children. And, and we're talking about the whole family here. These, these, uh, this advice here could be for the parents, could be for the teenagers, uh, young adults, children, the whole family. But right now, you know, the, the parental guidance you know, when we are following the Lord, parents, you, you are an important part of your, your children's life. It's, it's so important. That's what it says here. The very, you know, hear my son. Your father then instruction and your mother's what? Teaching. Your father and mother's teaching. And look at the blessing there. There are graceful wreath around your, your head and ornaments around your neck. There's something precious, something wonderful for you to, uh, to have in your head, in your mind, in your heart. And so the first uh, uh, advice there is to pay attention to parental guidance. Pay attention to it. Pay attention to it. You know, uh, Solomon was talking also about gangs back in those days. What? There was gangs back in, you know, two, three thousand years ago and... Um, Yes, they had gangs. There's always been gangs. Uh, and what is it that lures, that, that appeals to young people to join a gang? When a lot of these uh, gang bangers or whatever end up uh, in prison or dead or, you know, uh, their, their lives are destroyed. What is so luring? What is so appealing? What is so attractive that so many uh, young people join gra gangs? And we'll be sharing as, as we go along here in these verses as we're looking at them. Uh, look at the, the second advice here. You know, it, is what? Found in verse 10. My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. Avoid bad influences, of course. Why? Because they influence you. They affect you. They, they have a way of... of impacting your life and and it uses the word entice there i want you to notice that because um all my life as a child and youth and everything because i grew up in the church was get away from sin don't follow sin run from sin flee from sin you know all the, i i hear it i hear it i heard that all my life i got that Run from it. But where maybe our parents, you know, needed to inform us or highlight or put emphasis is in the word here uh, that it uses in, in the Hebrew, which is entice. The word entice. And, if, and my son, if sinners entice, so, uh, underline that, you. Maybe my parents should have put more emphasis in that. You see, I, I could run or I could flee or I could... But entice, you know, this means that sin, when it is presented to me as a youth, I don't know about you, but even with uh, the people I hung around with in high school, man, it looked appealing. It didn't look like something ugly. It didn't look like something I wanted to run away from. It was something I wanted to run to. Right? Isn't it? <laughs> and that's the way Satan wants to present sin. That's the way, that, that's what entice means. You know, something that's appealing. Something that, 
that offers you something good, that all your friends are, are that, and, and you are, you're, you're not a part of that, and you feel left out, and until what eventually you, you become a part of it and are doing what they're doing. You know, I, I could run to it, but, uh, you know, we're tempted to run to it. That's what enticement means. I want to be a part of that. I want to taste that. I want to feel that. And then it uses another word here in verse. My, my son, if sinners, you know that word sinners there? Also in the Hebrew, you know that it's talking about criminals. Not just somebody that made a bad moral decision, wrong, right? But this is criminals, people that will, will uh, you know, lure you away, will entice you, will, bad people. Bad people. I'm not into law enforcement, but you know, one of my sons is in Texas, and the other one's a firefighter in in Sacramento Bay Area, and and uh, but you know, these TV programs that I look at, you know, I, um, that I watch sometimes, I see evil, you know, and 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 bad uh, people, you know, getting individuals to to commit. Horrible and terrible and ugly uh, crimes, you know. This 14-year-old that I Googled to look at, that I looked up, I saw the story. Um, I think he was four, uh, 13 and 14, somewhere in that range. And I looked it up in the CBS News. And I, I pushed, you know, there in Google. And it came up, the story came up about this 13-year-old. No criminal history. No, uh, nothing in his background. That, But why did he start running around with the what the wrong crowd and then all of a sudden he kills a, a 18 year old killed a 17 18 year old um, girl and now he he's looking at you know uh, years in in prison and then they they sort of brought down the sentencing sentencing because he was a minor and so forth and but man that that I looked at that and I go, man, I see a lot of this, right? You read about it all the time of, uh, of this happening. Bad influences, you know, in our lives. And look at number three here. Number three is verses 11 through 14. I mean, all this is advice. 11, if they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us ambush <clears throat> the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them alive like Sheol. <clears throat> Even while as those who go down to the pit, we will find all kinds of precious wealth. We will fill our houses with spoil. Throw in a lot with us. We shall have one purse. You know, here, here, here they are inviting you to c come on in. Hey, there's going to be a lot of good stuff here. This is where, hey, let, let's go rob, uh, you know, this place. Or let's rob these people. Let's do this. And... Uh, you know, I remember my daughter uh, making me aware in in the kitchen, you know, there. Of, she said, Dad, look what I, I saw here, a video of an uh, ex-pastor, you know, uh, who uh, now was robbing a bank, you know. And I go, what? I go, where? He goes, she said, she showed it to me right there in the kitchen table. And, the, and, and yes, it was this individual. You know, he came out of gangs and, and you know, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and everybody was happy and they go wow what a testimony coming out of gangs and everything and now he is a follower of the Lord now he's you know want, wants to be a preacher wants to be a pastor and which he did for a while and then all of a sudden what he got lured back into that lifestyle and and you know then he was uh, here he was robbing a bank you know the Here's the sales pitch right here in verses 11 to 14. Here's this, you know, when I go look for a car out there in, in, in the, with the dealers, you know, I go to Toyota or I go, you know, they always have a sales pitch. Hey, this is a wonderful machine. This is the ultimate machine, B and BMW, what have you. There's a, a wonderful what sales pitch. Until you get off, you know, the, you take the car off the lot, then it loses its, its uh, value, whatever, and next thing you know it's having trouble but uh, this is the way that 
They present things, you know. They're there, you know, waiting for, for people who are innocent or maybe naive, don't know any better. I'm that way. When I was teaching some classes a while back, anger management classes, the guys in my class were teaching me some words that I, you know, uh, my boy, you know, I go, well, who's your boy? You know, what, what are you talking about? Okay, now I know, now I know it's my, my boy, right? My, the one I watch, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> so I, I started, you know, um, but um, uh, this, this is what it's saying here. Look at, look at the next verses here. You know, the pirates, remember, they, they would always, you know, be out there in the ocean blue, and, and what would, they would assault, you know, these, these bolt, boats, and they would go and get the wealth and, with swords and, and everything and, and take the loot, take the... And it all looked like it was wonderful to be a pirate. Remember that? Pirate. Or maybe, a, you know, a robber, rob banks, rob uh, stagecoaches until the guy got a rifle and... And, you know, and then he started shooting the, the robbers or what have you. But it always looks appealing. There'd be riches. Maybe I could join a gang. We can make, sell drugs and make money. You know, why are these people, you know, driving around? Uh, uh, my wife said that this family drives what, this big old car to school. You know, a big, uh, I've never even had a car like that, but a huge expensive car. And if they don't get it by working in a, in a job, you know, and doing an honest day of job, where are they getting the money? Drugs. But look at verses um, here, uh, 15 and 16. We're going through the word of God. 15, 16, my son, do not walk in the way, in the way with them. Keep your feet from, from their path. Put their feet, uh, for their feet run to evil, and they hasten to shed blood. They hasten to shed uh, blood here. You know, uh, don't go that road. Don't go that, that direction. You know, it might look attractive. It might look appealing. Uh, maybe, you, have, uh, you know, your peers, your friends, young people, are all doing it. That's why I want to do it. I don't want to look like the odd one. I don't look want to... I know the peer pressure, as they call it. You know, the peer pressure, uh, it's so great that I have to be doing what they're doing. We understand that. But if you're a follower of the Lord, the Lord will give you the strength to say no. Don't follow bad roads, bad paths. Don't go in that direction. Go in the direction of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No one goes into the Father except through me. He's the way. He's the road. Follow him. Follow him. Do what he does. And then to conclude here, in the verses, not the sermon, but to conclude here, look what it says in verses 17 to 19. Indeed, it is useless to spread the baited net in the sight of any bird. You know, like when you go bird hunting or when you go, you, you know, you, you might take a gun or you might do use a net. You haul the, the, the birds, get caught in the net, that kind of a thing. But they lie in wait for their, their own blood and they ambush their own lives. They are the ways of everyone who gains by violence. And it takes away the life of its possessors. You know, I'm glad that, you know, there's justice, there's law enforcement, there, there's because eventually what? People will get what they what? Deserve. And, and the Bible says that. There's a verse there. Whatever a man sows, so shall he also reap. Galatians 6, 7. You know, the, here, here are the, pay attention to what? Your parents. Avoid what? Bad influences. Built into your life. I love this one. Built into your, your life. Uh, parents, built into your, your children's life. Biblical values. Let's say, I'll say it together. Biblical values. What are values? Values are what's important in your life. What's important, the, the values that the Bible presents. There's values in this book. Yeah, like parents are important. Marriage is important. So many values in, in the word of God that, that we should follow. 
the most important person in my life is, 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 is who? Jesus, the Lord. You know, th th there are values in, in the Word of God. Are we teaching our children those values? I want to ask uh, the parents right now, you know, are, are you building those values that are worthy of Christ? In the life of, of your children, Paul said in Philippians 3, 7, and 8, all these things are dung, which means trash, filth. I wouldn't even say the most filthy thing that he could imagine right there. Everything that he had gained in life, reputation, uh, accolades, whatever uh, rewards, Whatever things the world considers to be important, he had it. Paul had it. He said, I consider those things as trash compared with the surpassing excellency of knowing Christ Jesus. See, that? what was the most important thing? It was Jesus. It was Christ. But I want to ask uh, parents here, you know, uh, what are you building right now in your children's lives? The Bible says that, um, you know, that, that our children are precious to us. In Psalm 127, 3 to 5, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb, a reward, like arrows in the hand of a warrior, are the children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame. He speaks with his enemies with the gate, in the gate. You're blessed because of what? Of your heritage. You come from a Christian heritage. I come from a Christian heritage. And it's rewarding. There are blessings. And your children, are, you have a handful of arrows there. Yeah. You have a handful of arrows. Are they straight? Are they sharp? It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. They're not going to hit the target. And we want them to hit the target. Arrows are good for one thing, to hit the target. I did it in high school. Remember archery? I remember us getting out there in the field, and, and we started uh, learning how to bow and arrow, we, you know, that kind of a thing. And, um, but arrows are, are there for what? To hit the target. Hit the target. You know, and so dad or mom, here's the question. What's your target? NFL. NFL, you know. I want them to play for the Raiders. No, not in here. <laughs> I want them to play for, for, the, for the Chiefs. I want them to play for, for the Green Bay. I want them to. Is there anything wrong with that? Okay, I'm going to tell you. You know, here, here are some, you know, I want my children to make more money than I do. I've said that. I want them to do well. I want them to go to college or learn a trade. Not everybody goes to college, but learn a trade, and I want them to stay out of trouble. See, I want them not to get pregnant or to get someone else pregnant. Or become addicted to something, drugs, alcohol, or what have you. I want my kids to get married and have their own kids and live a happy life or love, uh, you know, and love what they do. Hey, listen, I want those things for my, my kids, my grandkids too now. But are those the target that I should have for my children? That's not what the Lord wants. Those are, are things that your, your Christian friends have. That's true. <laughs> what is different about your, your uh, goal, what, of your objective for your child, of your target for that makes it different, that makes it biblical, that it comes from this book right here, the Word of God? Hey, that's right. You know, now, these things are distinctly Christian or even biblical. You 
You know, I want my kids to, to do well. I want them to have happiness. But I want them to be in, in pursuit of a target that, what, that honors what the Lord Jesus Christ. And there should be one target that parents, husband and wife, Christian parents, should have and is worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what's that? That when they stand before Jesus, that they stand before the Lord. <sighs> my four children, my ten grandchildren, what is it that I want them to hear? I want them to hear this, what I have here that I have in my office now. I've had this over my diplomas, over my recognitions, over my uh, schooling, you know, over 18, 20 years of school. You know, what is it that I have above those things? Not that those things are not good in themselves, you know, but the greatest recognition, I believe, is here. Well done, good and faithful servant or slave in the Greek, doulos. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Many things enter into the joy of your master, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. Matthew 25, 23. This is what I want. This is what I want for myself. This is what I want for my children. This is what I want for my grandchildren. Is that the desire of your heart? Is that the desire of your heart? Listen, parents, you, you need to want that for your children. If your son was out there near Niagara Falls and they were there where the water is calm and down south is where Niagara Falls is. I always wanted to go see the Niagara Falls, see that wonder, you know, of, of the waterfalls. And your son is over here paddling, you know, a few uh, miles here from the waterfall. And he's calm there in the waterfall. But you're up on the mountain and you could see him paddling in the calm uh, water there. But you could see the waterfalls not too far away. And you know what lies there. Wouldn't you start shouting, my son, you know, stop pedaling. My son, get out of there. And wouldn't you want him to pedal away to the shore right there? Get out of the boat before it goes where? Over to the waterfalls where he is certainly going to be pulled by those waterfalls down to a certain death. Oh, no, let him continue going. <laughs> That's what some parents, they, they might not say it, but what are they doing about it to help their children not go in that direction. Well, yeah, you're, you're right. I, there's something I could do. I could, I, could, uh, I, I, I could warn my children. Yes, why don't you warn your children? Why don't you warn your children? You know, build into their lives those values. Put an end to comparison. Quit comparing. Look at it. If, if my kids were like his kids or brother so-and-so's kids, or his daughter. Look at, they're so wonderful kids. That you quit comparing. Parents do that. Kids do that too. I wish I had those parents. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no kids do that, huh? I did that once, you know, with an uncle and my aunt. You know, my poor mom, she did the best she could, but dumb kid you know, that I was back then. I, You know, but... Um, let love and acceptance abound in your, in your home. You know what Maslow's theory is, I, you know, in, in psychology, the, you know, that uh, when you reach act actualization, self-actualization, you know, if you have love, if you have acceptance, see, then you reach act self-actualization, you've reached it. That's what Maslow said. But, but you know what? Um, no, when you have Christ, you have love. You have love. You have acceptance from the Lord, young people. Don't look for the world's acceptance. Why do you think people join gangs? Because they take him in. He's my boy. He's my, these are, they love me. They'll die for me, you know, and, and they get all the love and acceptance and recognition that they want. But then it only leads them to what? To destruction. Death. That's, that's what it leads them to. You know, there should be a lot of love and acceptance in, in the home. 
You're not, you're not worth anything. You still, you know, there's, there's expectations that they can't even, you've never even had a uh, dad or mom, and yet you're putting them on your child. How did you know? <laughs> hey, young people, your parents experienced a lot of things you did. Maybe even worse things. You might even go, what? My dad did this, my mom. And that's the truth. A lot of times there were no angels. But that's why we should be loving and accepting at home that, are, that it would abound at the home, that they wouldn't have to look out there uh, in, in their friends or gangs or the world. The world says, come on, come on, come on, come on. No. That I, I have enough love and acceptance at home and even with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. What shall separate, separate me from the love of Christ? Romans 8. Not the present. No one. Nothing. Demons. The death, nothing could separate me from the love of God. See, that's why I, 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 I have that in my life, and that's why I keep going forward. I don't need it from the world. Don't be overprotective, too. Sometimes we go over, I know, be protective of your children. Don't get me wrong. I don't care where they are at 1 o'clock at night. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's not what I'm talking about here. You should know where your children are, and you should know where they are and who, with who they are with while they are in, under your care at home. But don't be overprotective. You know, I'm following, yeah, I see him here in the mall, and there he is. And <laughs> No, no, no parents do that, right? Let them feel a little bit of the pain. I know my own son said, Dad, you know, I have to, I have to feel some pain, some hurt. How am I going to grow? I go, son, I know, but don't argue with the policeman. <laughs> you know. What are you out there arguing with the policeman at, at, your, at the school with your, you know, he goes, well, they're racist, Dad, and this one is, you know, uh, I go, I know you shouldn't be there at that hour, and you shouldn't, you know, and I know you want to, but yes, you're going to feel some of the pain, young people. Your parents are going to allow you to feel that pain, and you're going to say, whoa, this is ugly, this is terrible, I, ouch, I don't want this. They'll only let you feel that pain, but then they'll be there to be at your side, to be there to helpful, to be helpful to you. Don't follow the wrong path. We already mentioned that. Don't lead your children with your words. Some some parents will live, hey, do as I said, but don't look at what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> you know that some parents do that? You know, they're they're doing things that they're telling the kids not to do, and, and they're the kids are getting like double messages, you know. He's telling me not to do it, and yet he, he's doing it. Don't confuse them, the blow fuse. What? Lead by your life. Lead by your example. Hey, there's an idea. <laughs> Don't lead your children with your words, but with your life, lead them. They're going to uh, want to put Jesus number one in their lives because they see Dad doing it. They see he's a servant. He serves. He's serving left and right at church and everywhere he goes because what Jesus is in his life. Lead by your life. Too many parents have given bad example to their children. Bad example. And then you're wondering why your child turned out to be the way they did. I wonder where they got that example. You, know? <laughs> you ever look in the mirror? You know, one of these days, maybe sometimes it's us. Evildoers, this is the fine, will eventually what be destroyed. Thank the Lord. Whatever a man sows, so shall he also what reap. Lead by example. Don't be just a hearer of God's word. Oh, we go to church, and my dad never puts the word into action. No, I see, I see my dad, you know, making an effort. Not perfection, but the direction of his life is that he's putting into practice what he hears. What he hears. I, I, I read about this in, in one column that I was devastated by this, uh, about... Um, what was it, seven or eight women that were killed uh, in an article that I, that I read. And the, the article said this, uh, you know, that um, what, one part of the tragedy of these girls being killed, and eight of these girls being killed, uh, the worst tragedy is, was that um, they were so attractive. <laughs> Can you believe that? This really, they were so attractive. Oh, what a waste. Oh, how terrible. You mean if they were ugly and 
uh, homely looking, plain, whatever, uh, it wouldn't have been as bad. You, know? you see how the world thinks. You see the problem, how the world thinks upside down. This is absur- it's absurd. It is, not, you know, unbiblical nonsense. And yet we follow a lot of the world's uh, wisdom and, 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 and what they think and what they believe and what they value and what they... But this is real and, and the world is thinking like this. It's thinking like this. And I want to finish, you know, with uh, what happened this last week, you know, in the football game. Uh, you know, with this young player... Um, and I put here in highlight reality of death uh, with DeMar Hamlin. You remember the Bills, Buffalo Bills? I was watching the game, and boom, next thing you know, uh, he's lying on the ground back, and then the ambulance, and, and then the both teams cir- made a circle around that, and everybody was like, what, stunned? How could a 24-year-old in the best shape of his life Healthy, young, this is, you know, boom, it just, you know, and we were all there, you know, and, and praying, you know, or at least lifting up, a, I hope, you know, this young man will make it through, and, and then the ambulance comes in, and then they're working on him, cardiac arrest, and, and uh, they're still trying to figure out if he had some kind of disease or some kind of a prior uh, condition, and so what you know, here, here's what everybody is looking at. And then this last week, you know, he started getting better, better. And then when he woke up, uh, the doctor was there. And he, t- he asked the doctor, uh, Doc, did we win? You know, did we win <laughs> the football game? And the doctor said this, according to my wife. And then later on, it was confirmed. You know, you won, uh, young man, you won the game of life. You won the game of life. But I'm glad he made it through thus far, and I I wish him well. But he didn't win yet. Unless DeMar Hamlin is a Christian, he hasn't won the game of life yet. You win the game of life when you give your heart to Christ. When you give your soul to Christ. What shall a man profit if he gain the world and loses his soul? You could be a billionaire, millionaire. But if you lose your soul, if you, go, you die without going to heaven, you lose it all. You win in life when you give your heart to Christ. Here, the, the, you know, what, what captured the attention of the nation was a young man, healthy and well. And everybody was looking at this. But what, you know, the reality of death right there in front of them. But what they should have learned was that I better do something about my life because I'm not going to be here forever. And where is the solution? Who has an answer to death? Jesus. Jesus has an answer to death. And only, the only time you really win in game, as I said, is when you give your life to Christ. John 5, 12 says, He that has the Son has eternal life. Is it, can it be, you know, any clear? He that has the Son, Jesus, has them in thoughts? Uh, uh, you know, a pa- no, 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 has them in his heart. You're sealed by Christ. He lives in you. Has eternal life. If you don't have the Son of God, it says there, you don't have eternal life. Let's, let's stand at this time. I want to ask you to stand with me. You know, I know I've, Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you for your love. Father, if there's someone here that hasn't received you, Father, as Lord and Savior, for as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called the children of God. John 1, 12. I pray that someone here, Lord, would believe in you, would receive you right now as their Lord and Savior, that they would get right with you, that they would give their soul, their heart to you right now. Father, that they would be saved. There's only two kinds of people in the world. Those that are saved, those that are not saved. Which of the two are you? That you would say, Lord, I follow you. I believe in you all the days of my life. Always I will follow you. I thank you. I praise you. And now, Lord, I pray that if we're believers, Lord, that we would wake up. 
that we would follow this example, this example, the, this advice here, Lord. It's not there to put on my wall, to put on my car as, uh, you know, reminders, Lord, but these uh, proverbs are there to practice. Practice the proverbs. Practice the proverbs. Don't just sing about them. Just don't have them on your wall. Live them. Live them out in your life. How many of us are willing to do that? Yes, I'm willing to do that. For a blessing in my life and also for bringing glory to Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me this day. Lead me from this place with joy, with gladness, with determination in 2023 to be wise and to live wisely in this crazy world. I thank you, Lord, and I praise you. And all of God's people said, amen, amen. Okay, we're going to say a word of prayer here, okay, to conclude. Pastor Osvaldo? Yes, uh, uh, we've been praying for Mike Matthews' dad, and uh, I'm told that he was going to be gone for a while, for a while. He's going to be taking care of his dad. And uh, we just want to pray for Mike. Um, you know, that's something really special that Mike can take care of his dad. Mike's parents took care of him, raised him, and now he can take care of his dad. He's very fortunate because uh, something I would have liked to have done too, but being so far away, I couldn't do that. But Mike, uh, you'll be gone for us for a while. And we just want to pray for you. The, the prayer team has been praying for his dad. But we just want to come on up and let's, uh, we just want to ask for a word of prayer. Okay, uh, I know a church that uh, you people pray and, and we just want to stand in, in the gap. And I'm going to ask Brother Joe as worship leader and that we would just pray for him at this time, okay? And then we'll be dismissed. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Brother Mike who serves you in, in, the, in the music ministry. We thank you, Lord, that we can come around him at this moment, and we can pray, Father, that you would guide him as he takes care of his dad, who, who has really been ill. Lord, we thank you for Brother Matthews, that, uh, Lord, uh, he, he knows you as his personal Savior, and we just ask, Father, that your will will be done. And I pray, Father, and we come together as a church and we pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just uh, extend your hand of healing and mercy upon Brother Matthews and that you would guide uh, Mike during these days. And we just continue to pray for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We dismiss. Thank you. Thank you.